I'm pretty terrible at making build videos of things I do because my creative physical creation brain and my brain for photography and videography seem to run on different wavelengths. So I never really think to carry my camera with me and set it up and take progress pictures or videos as I go or to film myself. But that said, I built this. Ripped out this patio, put it back in using mostly supplies that we already had, that being the flagstones. So I wanted to do a video, things I learned along the way. Additionally, I hope to share some of the videos that I found that helped me. And I'll put some of the most helpful links down in the description. So if you are planning on tackling a patio for the first time or some sort of project like this for the first time, like I did, hopefully this will be helpful to you. Also, this video is probably gonna be longer than it needs to be, so. I apologize in advance. The patio was in, I wouldn't say it was awful shape, but it was it was pretty rough shape. So the patio was the flagstone patio, and then the small retaining wall, which is about a foot tall, was also made of the flagstone. But everything above it had kind of started to fall over it, and the flagstone itself was brittle. So a lot of the flagstone that was on the ground was chipping up, flaking off because the flagstone was just Oh, there was moss and weeds growing up from in between the flagstones, and we just couldn't stay on top of it. As we redid, started doing things in the back, we had the deck rebuilt, we relocated where the stairs landed. It was very uneven. I just kind of threw some pea gravel down, pulled some of the flagstones that were in the retaining wall and put them here. I first lifted up all the flagstones, got them out of the way. All the ground was already compacted, so I didn't think I would have to bring in any sand to lay it down, level stuff out. And truth be told, I probably didn't have to. So I settled on a retaining wall that was a six by six beam. The nice thing about that is I could fit it in our van. I don't have a truck. I don't have a cart to drive everything back here. Six by six, eight foot beam so I could carry it myself. That's something that a lot of these guys on YouTube are not gonna tell you. They're not gonna tell you, get something that you can be sure you could carry by yourself if you're embarking on this project yourself. They just all seem to have a bunch of neighbors and uh, people in their family that just jump in and help them whenever they need something and give them all the tools that they need. The joints are not perfect. Actually, nothing out here is perfect. That's okay, I'm okay with that. When I was putting the beams down, I was gonna have to stake them to the ground. Some videos recommend putting in rebar. I ended up getting ground stakes that were about a foot long and I drilled into the beams and then I just pounded the stakes in the rest of the way with a hammer. So I cut them, pretty much all of them are at a 45 degree angle to make the corner and I used a circular saw because I only could cut halfway and then I had to flip it over and cut the other halfway. But because of that, the angle is not incredibly accurate. I wish I could have done a little better and a little cleaner, but also it's, it's okay. I'm okay with the look that it ended up because it ended up looking kind of cool. So what tools did I need and what tools did I start with and what tools am I glad that I bought for this project? One of the first things I recommend having is work gloves. I have these Milwaukee work gloves and they definitely took a beating during the course of carrying all the wood, all the flagstone. The flagstone is very heavy, very sore. This is a must. I'm going to have to get new ones after this project because they got destroyed. Circular saw. It was very helpful, portable made it so I could cut the beams relatively easily. A drill, I have a DeWalt cordless drill. That worked great. The thing that I didn't have that I needed to purchase was a driver. So I ended up getting a DeWalt impact driver that uses the same batteries as the drill that I have. The reason I needed the driver was to put the screws into the retaining wall where I double stacked them. I had a 12 inch screw that I needed to put through there. So I had to go out and get a T50 star bit. My drill just did not have enough power to get those screws all the way through. It, it wasn't working. The drill couldn't make it through. I got the driver, turned that into pretty much no problem with the new batteries and the full charge and all that. And that's one of those tools that as a DIYer, I never really thought that I would need until a project like this when my drill just wanted to cut it. Another thing I bought was mallet, a small rubber mallet. I ended up not using it much. I did use it a little bit, uh, to when I was setting the stones to try to get them a level and tap them down, uh, but I didn't use it a whole lot. Another thing I got was a tamper. I've had quite a few times in recent years that I've wanted a tamper or wish that I had one, so I just ended up buying a 10 by 10 tamper from Menards, and I ended up using that a lot um, to make sure the ground was flat before I put anything down, to flatten out the sand before I laid the flagstones back, and then again, after I laid all the flagstones and got the poly sand in, I put a sheet of plywood over top of the flagstone and tamped on top of that to kind of shake and vibrate all the sand into place. Because I didn't go out and rent one of those 
vibrating things that shake everything in, which is probably the best way to do this job. Got a piece of plywood, threw it over top, walked around, tamped it down, made sure everything shook and vibrated into place. And it actually worked very well. Other tools that I had, I have a uh, flat shovel. Uh, it's known as a transfer shovel. Get one of these shovels because these things are awesome. They are great for removing sod and they were great for prying up the flagstones. They're also great for transferring as the name would imply. So I used the transfer shovel to pull up sod. I used it to transfer sand. I used it to pull, pry up all the flagstones. I probably broke the thing I used it so much because it was it was used extensively to do a lot of heavy work. Highly recommend getting a transfer shovel, not a pointed shovel. If you tried to pry up these flagstones with a pointed shovel, you're just gonna, you're gonna break them, especially if they're as brittle as these ones. Another tool I used that I, I see a lot of people that don't have this tool is a, it's a half moon blade. And that's something I use to cut the straight lines and cut out the sod. One of the things I did when I was removing sod is I would use the half moon blade, cut into the grass, make the lines, and then I would come along with the transfer shovel, the flat shovel, push it in and pry up the sod. So I would cut 12 inch by 12 inch square of sod. And that's what I would dig out because it would be easy for me to cut and circle, grid it out, pull the transfer shovel, pull up the sod and throw it out. And that way I wasn't making giant huge pieces of sod that were too heavy to carry. Because again, I was doing this pretty much by myself. Another tool I had was my garden cart. I have a really small garden cart. A better tool would have been a wheelbarrow with a higher center of gravity, a higher thing that I could push. The garden cart I had to pull ended up absolutely killing my arms because it was lower to the ground and I couldn't load it too heavy. I can only do about a half load of sand. If you have a riding lawnmower or something, get a cart, like a garden cart attached to it. That way you can load it up and you can just drive it. That would have been the best option. Another thing I invested in was a leaf blower. I use the Ego system of tools, the Ego Power Plus system of tools. So I bought the leaf blower from Lowe's and uh, the leaf blower was definitely a must have. After I put the poly sand down on top of the flagstone, I used a leaf blower to blow it off clear off the flagstones. I didn't get it perfect. There's still quite a bit in there, but the leaf blower definitely made that job a heck of a lot easier. And I didn't have one before, so that was definitely a good purchase. I don't have any sponsorships. Nothing was sponsored. I bought supplies and tools and material for this job from Home Depot, from Lowe's, and from Menards. So I'm hardware store agnostic, not sponsored by anyone that said if a brand or one of these brands of things that I used wants to sponsor me, I would not be opposed if you would send me some tools. I think that's pretty much all the tools that I used for this job. I will try to link to everything that I got. Also, make sure you have a dust mask and gloves for when you're pouring the poly sand and uh, safety goggles and ear protection. These are all things that you should just have anyway if you're working with power tools. When I was pouring the poly sand, if you're not familiar with poly sand, it hardens after you get it wet. I thought, I'm sure there's warnings on the bag that say this as well, but I thought, you know, this is probably not gonna be the healthiest thing if I inhale this and it turns to concrete in my body. So I made sure I put on my dust mask, I had my protective goggles on, and I wore latex gloves while pouring the poly sand just because I've never worked with it before. I wasn't sure what to expect, and I didn't want it to cause a problem for me in the future. Now, what was great about this particular project is I didn't have to dig down, I didn't have to completely start all over. The ground was already graded, so that was nice. The only thing I did have to do was make sure that the areas that hadn't already had a patio on it, which is the area at the bottom of the stairs, I had to dig that down so it matched. And then I also pulled out sod to add another about five feet out here. Uh, when I removed the retaining wall, I moved the retaining wall in uh, a couple feet because it just made more sense than having to dig all the dirt back. I wanted to make sure that I had enough space to put in the retaining wall and then backfill behind it. For every beam I put down two or three 12 inch spikes that I put through and then to hold them together 10 inch screws. Once I had the old flagstone, the old patio completely out and I dug out the rest of the sod I originally was not going to put down sand, I was just going to use what was already there, but I decided it would probably make more sense to put down sand in order to make sure the flagstone could be as level as possible because all these pieces were older, they were brittle, they were breaking apart, and it was going to be pretty hard to level them without putting down that sand. Also, because I had dug out new sod, I figured it would make sense to put down rock. I think I got 10 to 15 bags of that 
from Menards in order to cover the places I had dug out. I also put that in backfilled behind the retaining wall with the same rock. After I put down the rock, I tamped it as well as I could. And then I started with the leveling sand. I started just buying the bags of leveling sand from Menards because I figured I would just level as I go. And then I decided I really need to put down enough in order to bring the level of the flagstone up to the bottom stair when we had the new deck built where these stairs terminated was a little higher and I wanted to level that all out. When I leveled it all out, I realized even with the flagstones here, it was not gonna be high enough and I didn't want to have to have a step down to the patio. So I got a couple of PVC pipes that were an inch in diameter. So I would lay down the PVC pipes, I would pour the sand, and then I would pull my four foot level or a six foot two by four along to flatten everything out. Placing old flagstones is absolutely dreadful work. All these flagstones are not light, incredibly sore after moving them the first day, which started on a Sunday. And then the next Saturday, I moved all of them out into the yard. We sprayed them with water both sides to clean them off really good because we didn't want things growing off of them that it might have built up over time. And then after they were cleaned, after I got all the sand laid down, then we started placing them. I tried to work by placing bigger ones first and working around it. We ended up with a lot of joints that were a lot bigger than I would have preferred. Because I had a lot of space in between the rocks, I, I took as many small pieces I could find that had broken off of the bigger ones and put them in between to try to get these breaks between all the rocks as small as possible. From the research and the videos I watched, that a lot of polymetric sand is only for up to maybe half an inch and I ended up going with the polymetric sand from Menards that said it covers gaps up to a four inches which was great because I don't really have any gaps here that were more than four inches and any gap that I had that was more than four inches I got a part of a flagstone that had either broken off I would put sand underneath it to level it out as much as possible and in some of these spots actually a few that I'm sitting on right here I covered the rock that was in there I ended up covering with the poly sand so you can't even see it but it made it so there wasn't as much space between the poly sand. So what's the most difficult part of this project? Well, moving the stones was not easy. Definitely not easy. Moving all the sand was not easy especially when you don't have the proper tools or the proper cart which I definitely did not have. The most difficult part was probably setting the pavers the pavers were uh, they were hard to puzzle together especially when they are not perfect and then leveling them out was also quite the chore so it, it's not the easiest thing when you're placing old flagstones that aren't perfect they're all different sizes that definitely did not help probably the the poly sand it was the most nerve-wracking part of the whole thing completely foreign to me uh, it also did not seem to have a whole lot of grace Everything I read online, there were some things that said, don't use poly sand, it's terrible. There were some that said, use poly sand, it's amazing. There were some that said, make sure whatever you do, don't overwater the product. And there were other places that said, just make sure you don't underwater the product. So the things I learned about poly sand from the internet were use it, don't use it, don't overwater, don't underwater. Basically it was a lose-lose situation. And yet I still did it because I knew that if I dented, things wouldn't lock together. And I knew that if I didn't use it and I just used sand or something like that, then I would probably be back in the same situation that we had things growing up in between the cracks. It wouldn't be hardened and I'd still have some of these things falling apart because they are old and I wanted to reuse what I had because I didn't want to pay for supplies and material. A last minute decision that I made, and I say last minute because it really was last minute, after I had all the pavers set, I was just going to let this be a natural slope with the sand down to where the lawn started. Though I had it set, and I think that would probably have been fine, especially after the poly sand is put here and it's hardened. It seems really nice. I figured that there is a little bit of a step up on some of these stones. I'm okay with that because you're stepping up out of the yard. But I decided I should probably get some sort of border. I looked at a couple of paver borders. Originally, I was going to get a small plastic one. I just didn't like it. I was looking at some of the stone borders that were kind of like the paver borders and they just didn't stand out to me. So instead what I did is I went to Lowe's and I found these bricks. These were like, I think 69 cents a piece. So I ended up doing all 20 feet of this in bricks 
for like 20 bucks. It's a little bit of an optical illusion. I know this isn't straight, but hey, it's straight enough for me. And I'm pretty proud of it because I cut this line of sod without drawing a line or anything. I just cut it with my half moon shovel all the way down. And then I ripped out the sod and I think it ended up pretty straight. Polysan is um, it's definitely a great product. I followed the instructions to a T because I was absolutely terrified to not do it right. I didn't want to overwater. I didn't want to underwater. We actually really like the look of the sand just sitting there, kind of like the, the dusty look. And what I like about it is when I watered it, it stayed like that and it solidified. And so it almost looks like a dusty look. So I was, I was okay with the sand kind of staying on top of the rocks, kind of blowing over some of the other rocks. Some of the rocks are half covered. It almost turned into more of a sculpture. This is hard, right? It's stiff. There's some areas that still give a little. I don't know if that's because it's just deep and it hasn't fully uh, bonded yet or if it's if it's just because the gaps were so big but i did i did put stones in the middle as much as i could to close up some of those gaps so even though it looks like over there is a huge space there's actually a rock underneath that so it's not as big of a space as it looks like i feel like i shouldn't have to say this but apparently i do because uh because i definitely made this mistake how the sand looks before you water it is going to be how it looks in the final product don't expect it to settle or change a whole lot. I was very careful when I was blowing it off with my leaf blower and I was very careful not to step on any of the poly sand. And I watered all of it, it hardened up really good. And I came out here after 24 hours after it was done and I see footprints for myself. So uh, watch that, your footprints are gonna stay. I have some footprints there. Uh, the nice thing is, is there's still some give some places. So I was kind of able to push some of them out a little bit uh, but other ones, I'm just going to leave them, you know, because it's part of the sculpture piece. It's part of the artwork, and I'm okay with that. Tell me I'm okay with that. I want to believe I'm okay with that. The other thing that I probably should have done after I put down the poly sand is I should have put out some sort of decoy or something to scare off the birds. The birds come out here, and they poke little holes in the sand looking for worms or bugs or whatever. There were a couple of little spots that I could tell that birds poked into and so there was little holes throughout that I, I was able thankfully to just kind of like push down and fill them in but I probably should have put like a bird decoy or something out here to scare them away I think that probably would have helped so that was the project hopefully you learned a little bit from this I'm happy to answer any questions I'm happy to share anything I learned along the way and also I will try to share all the tools that I used in the description. I will also try to share some of the videos from the people that I found helpful. Just know that I've never done a patio before. This was a brand new experience for me. I'm sure some of you patio experts will say, look at this and say, well, obviously you've never done this before because this is awful. That's okay, it works for us. I didn't expect it to be perfect. I didn't need it to be perfect. I just needed it to be somewhat functional and I needed it to look better and last a little longer than what was here previously. And I believe I accomplished that. And I like this retaining wall a heck of a lot better than the one that was there before. So I'm happy with it. We'll put some chairs out here. We might put a little fire pit, but I think everything worked out well.